Hi, this is Nash with Alpha Phi, and today I'm going to answer a question that I got from a client and a fellow investor, which is essentially, which will grow my wealth more, investing cash using or using a high cash value whole life policy and then investing that cash? So that side-by-side -side comparison, especially with interest rates rising today, it's uh, October 2022, so interest rates are going through the roof. Um, so it's a really important question and let's dive in. So uh, I modeled this with using straight cash and then dumping it into syndications and I'll show how that looks in a second. I'm just laying the groundwork. So using cash versus a high early cash value policy for 10 years and uh, cycling the money through there and then investing and then a 10 pay policy for 10 years just to show some different types of policies and how that reacts. Uh, these designs are for maximum cash value. Um, that's normally what I do unless somebody wants something different, um, which normally is basically prioritizing death benefit um, over cash value. Most folks I work with are investors and want uh, access to the maximum amount of cash value and cash value growth potential. So it's a low base premium, 10% and a high PUA contribution or 90% or a 90-10 policy is kind of the, the short form if you've heard that. So uh, essentially maximum cash value design. And then it's also important to note that um, I'm using uh, one of the four big major mutual companies that have a proven track record of performance, not just they can illustrate, you know, hey, we can make a lot, you know, have these policies grow at a, a very fast rate, but proven track record of performance, because that's more important than any illustration, is have these companies actually delivered. So these are the big four, Mass, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. All right, so I, I used uh, a couple scenarios, passing 100% of every dollar through the policy this assumes, and just to be very clear, instantaneously passing straight through and then going to a an investment. So, you know, essentially instantaneous pass through the policy and uh, investment. Why I say it that way is because it's very important for the uh, interest accrual and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of the policy loan interest, I'm, I'm assuming it's instantaneous, right? You fund it, you take it out, you invest it immediately, and you're immediately accruing that interest. Um, and then I showed basically passing 75% of dollars through a policy to invest. Uh, this can be either thought of as, you know, you're, say you're taking a hundred grand policy per year, um, you know, 75% of those dollars you're going to invest and you leave a little buffer in the policy for forever. Um, or you can also think about this as, hey, I'm funding my IBC. I've got a little typo there. It, IBC is fun, but funding IBC, um, having some wait time for the right deal, the right investment, basically a place to store liquidity, and then investing that money. Um, so essentially you are investing everything, but you know it takes a little bit of time to find the right deal, so it's not instantaneous. And you know I thought this was more practical when working through the numbers kind of reflecting on my own situation, that's kind of, kind of how I use it. So the reason that's important is the interest, um, you know, arbitrage is a lot different, especially when it's every single year, you know, every single second of every single year. So both of these, either you can, you can think about it one way or the other, they're effectively the same result. Um, but, you know, I think the funding your IBC, kind of waiting and finding the right investment, storing that liquidity in the policy as opposed to your, you know, very low yielding checking account is much better. That and then finding that right investment maybe within three three months plus or minus time frame, uh, and then investing. Right now it may be even longer. Um, again, we're kind of in recession territory. Deals are few and far between, so. I've had liquidity sitting in my policy for the better of six months, but uh, I thought this was a good baseline to start with. And then we got a variable uh, the policy loan interest rates that we can play with. Um, these policies are indirect recognition just to take that variable out, and so we're, we're showing a third party line of credit and we can play with that variable um, as much as we want. All right, so before getting to the conclusions, let me walk through the model here. So on the far left, we have investing only. So this is investing cash only, I should say. 
So uh, 50,000 every single year for 10 years, you're essentially adding to your investing pile. And so uh, it's 500 grand total in investable funds. This is the total capital you have. So 50,000, 50,000 goes into the investing bucket. You've invested 50K, the returns shown here. So this is assuming kind of a blend, you know, of deploying 50,000 year over year into syndications. You know, the first couple of years, cash flow may be uh, little to none. And then it starts, you know, this is, becomes a blended rate of return, right? Because it's 2% not only on your first 50, but your three years of 50. So keep that in mind. That's why it may look a little low and it starts to slowly, uh, you know, pick up. Um, so your your rates of return coming coming over here in terms of dollars, and then that gets added to your your total capital over here. And what we're going to be comparing is total capital um, in this column over here. So uh, you know, um, even when you're not adding new money to the pile, you've earned forty one thousand out here per year in an annual return. That adds to your capital balance, and then you can go invest that additional forty one. Uh, thousand again uh, for that blended uh, uh, rate of return. So that's kind of the math behind it before getting even more complicated layering over IBC. But we're going to eventually compare this total capital uh, building column. It's essentially the snowball. All right. So then what we have here is the higher the cash value for 10 years plus investing. So now you have your 50K, but first you're you're putting it through a policy. So in this scenario, you've got a product called the Hierarchy Cash Value. So it's coming back with 46,240 in cash value. You can invest that capital. Again, that rate of return over here uh, and same kind of situation. The only difference is this total capital. Once the policy starts um, increasing in cash value growth, you're actually adding that to your total capital of invested funds in addition to the syndication returns. And it's the same rate of return uh, percentages here. Then you have a deduction of your policy loan and, and interest rate. So we're going to play with this, but right now it's at 3.3%, shows your interest payment, and so on. So all of this gets netted out into this total capital column, which we will uh, eventually be playing around with. And then this is just a different policy, a 10 pay. The reason I wanted to show this is the higher the cash value is kind of a um, uh, typical policy I'll show people. 10 pays are uh, you know, limited in terms of you can only pay for 10 years, but their growth can be quite substantial. So you can kind of see that here um, in the cash value growth column if you want to compare back to, that, to the higher the cash value one. Um, so just a few different looks here. And then we have the total capital summary comparison showing the cash of the model, uh, showing the higher cash value in investing policy and the 10 pay in investing policy. The syndications are the exact same returns, so we're just kind of comparing apples to apples on, on uh, the total capital you'll have over time. Right now I kind of have it dialed in to where um, they're about the same. Uh, about the same amount out here in this time frame. Also, the colors kind of show you, you know, which way it's leaning, which one is better. Uh, right now, I, let's let's go back. Let's go back. Um, let's say six months. Policy in, or policy loan interest rates were at three percent. Those are days are long gone, but let's take a look. So three percent policy. Uh, uh, sorry, third party lock interest rate. Uh, I've got. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years highlighted. Let's just kind of zone in on uh, 25 years here. So the cash scenario, you end up at 2.1 million. The higher the cash value investment scenario, investing every dollar instantaneously uh, into something through your policy is 2.176 million, so definitely bigger. And then the 10 pay is 2.368 million, again, because that policy um, you know, is a really... Uh, high earner essentially and that's been proven proven performance as well in addition to the syndication returns so um, that is the old days of essentially the floor interest rates now let's go up to today five percent and five percent and what we see here is actually you know you're better off investing your cash but again, this is only looking at, or sorry, this is instantaneous investment, which I don't think is very 
uh, realistic. And why I say it's not really realistic goes back to that point of basically, you know, passing every dollar instantaneously through a policy is just not real life, right? But you can definitely uh, think about it this way, passing 75% of dollars through a policy, either instantaneously deploying, so let's just say the other 25 is for a rainy day fund, instead of sitting in your checking account, it's sitting in your policy, you're just not gonna touch that. So you can touch it if you want, but it's not going into a syndication where you don't have access to it. It's gonna sit in your policy where you have access to it. The other way to think about it is that this fund or fund IBC, you fund it and then you uh, have a waiting time while you're waiting for the right deal. So just assuming that three months wait time, uh, essentially you're waiting for a deal and then you invest those funds. So it's the same thing. One is just a, a time-based way to think about it. The other is a percentage of, of funds way to think about it. And I think both are, are true over time, right? Sometimes deals are, are more, but you, know, you, you always want to have a little bit of dry powder. Um, so for this model, essentially, the, the total capital contributed will look a little different. I think the right way to do this is kind of show that, hey, you have your checking account in this scenario. So it's 50,000 uh, minus this amount. So you're kind of keeping that 12.5 that in your checking account for rainy days. Well, uh, in, in the IBC scenario, you're gonna keep that in your policy because it's still accessible. It's just gonna do more for you. So that's kind of the comparison here. And then the invested funds is exactly the same though. So, and that's the key. When I say invested, I mean syndications, right? I, the high cash value whole life policy isn't an investment, but what are we actually investing? Exact same amount every single year. Um, and we're gonna compare, uh, you know, same thing here. And we're gonna compare the result. So let's come down to year 25. We have 1.575 million in the cash investing scenario. We have 1.591 in the first whole life scenario and 1.705 in the uh, second whole life scenario. So thinking about it this way with more realistic expectations, the the uh, high cash value whole life policies have a lot, lot of power. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that the policy loan interest rate is jacked up to 5% in both scenarios. So this is kind of more like today, assuming interest rates don't go back down, you know, this is a very high interest rate environment. Assuming they stay at 5% forever, this is still the result. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is a little more realistic and, and, you know, makes sense with like how actually it, it works when waiting for deals and place it, a place to store funds and that sort of thing. Now I'm going to move on to the conclusions. The other really important thing I wanted to show is that down here at age 33, I stopped essentially all syndication investing. So it's like, well, I've made, I made my money. I just want to enjoy life. I don't want to go be sourcing deals and everything like that. If that's anything that, that someone would consider, here's the really important part. You can either stop your cash investing and just sit on your 2.791 million. Remember, it was an original 500,000, so you've made you know, nearly 3 million bucks and just deplete that. Or your policy will just continue to compound and grow for you. Uh, so, you know, forever. So it continues to go. You don't have to do anything. You can even take retirement distributions and the compounding is so much that it really, you don't have to pay anything back. Um, so that's certainly something, some one way you can use these policies that's worth noting. So I'm gonna jump back here to uh, my conclusions. So instantaneous investing, 100%, this isn't very practical in my opinion. So taking your money, immediately cycling it through and into syndications every single time forever. Uh, at historical inter interest rates, yes, high cash value whole life is better. At these higher interest rates that we have right now, which I'm not gonna get into it, but I've made some other videos essentially showing how um, you know, economy, economies like we live in, where all tend to trend to zero with interest rates. So in this case, that would be 3%. So instantaneous investing 100% isn't very practical. But if you were able to achieve this at historical interest rates, back when we were in 3%, which I do think we're gonna come back there very soon after this 
uh, works its way through the system, say year, year and a half, whatever, I think we'll be back to essentially 3% CV lock interest rates. Yes, high cash value whole life is better. At higher interest rates, it may not be better and it depends on how you use it. That's why I went into this second scenario, more realistic scenario, using IBC as a, a place to store your liquidity. Uh, whether that all of it's for investing in syndications or whether some of your rainy day funds are going to sit there and not be touched, uh, the comparison um, is to a checking account, right? So you're earning a little bit more and that compounding is just taking place year over year over year. It's really going to help. So yes, using a high cash value whole life policy can be very beneficial as we saw in the numbers. Finding the right opportunities instantaneously isn't very practical. And if you ever stop active investing, you know, on this journey, that IBC snowball will not stop, right? You don't, you don't have to invest in syndications to make a good return after you've built up your snowball. Um, other considerations just while we're here uh, to, to take into account is that from, for a high cash value whole life is that we didn't talk about the death benefit. Obviously, that is, is nice to have, especially if you have family, kids, wife. Um, and it's a safe, liquid, tax-free area to position wealth. So we didn't talk about any of these benefits, but safe in that um, you know the returns are very kind of uh, slow, steady, boring, but over time very powerful. Liquid in terms of, like we said, you could store your rainy day funds there or anything uh, like that, and it's very accessible, very liquid. You can get it within a couple of days, and tax-free. So all these gains are tax-free, and you're your uh, death benefit payout would be income tax-free assuming you're under the estate tra th tax threshold which is very high. So I hope this was helpful. My conclusion because I you know this is a very good thought process for me to run through is that yeah it's definitely even at these higher interest rates with the practical ways way we're using this um, it is definitely beneficial to use these policies in uh, in conjunction with investing. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to share the Excel file as well so you can play around with it. But for now, have a good one. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, you can learn more at alphacrusaders.com at the link at the end of this video.